joining us now, George McDonald, founder and president of the Doe Fund, which runs Ready, Willing, and Able. He recently went to Washington to speak on behalf of the homeless and other disenfranchised Americans, hoping to encourage members of Congress to remember them when allocating stimulus package funds. George McDonald, one of those New Yorkers who's been doing God's work for about 25 years now. George, what have you learned over those 25 years about the population you serve and how to serve them? Well, Sam, I think that the, the, the most important thing is that uh, when you give somebody an opportunity to work, it changes the whole dynamic of their life. I mean, it, it, you know, it's not rocket science, but what we do is give paid transitional work to people coming home from prison from upstate, 25,000 of them come home every year, um, and we give them money as soon as they're home. So they live with their mother, their grandmother, their girlfriend, whoever parole says that they can live with, and then they go to work for us immediately. So they're bringing something into the household, and that changes the whole dynamic. The hardest thing in the world, and they're mostly African-American men, Sam, there's just no question about that. So, and the hardest thing to do for an African-American man with a prison record is to get a job. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just, so they go out and they bang their head against the wall, and eventually, whoever they're living with says, no, and you have to get out. And they become homeless, and they come into the homeless shelter system, and you know, start using drugs again, and get rearrested and go back. So, 44% of the people who come home from upstate every year are rearrested and go back at the end of a year. Only 5% of the people in our program go back. So it's a fantastic savings for the state. We can close prisons, and uh, it's just a question of getting the money to the people who actually need it the most at the bottom. With an agreement apparently reached Friday uh, on the revising the Rockefeller drug laws, does that increase your pool of clientele? Well, it does. It does in one way, but we're not a licensed drug treatment program. We're the most successful drug treatment program in America, but we're not a licensed drug treatment program. I am very concerned. You treat people by getting them a job. Sure. The, our work is the therapy. I mean, you know, and, and they give up drugs right away, and we do drug testing twice a week. So we can assure you that people are not using drugs and don't use drugs. But my concern is that, that anybody that knows anything about drug treatment knows that the success of it is questionable. That if you want to be measured, uh, you know, that's us. We want to be measured. Uh, we want to compare our program to drug treatment programs and for the government to invest in what works. President Obama has said it. He wants to go line by line in, in social service budgets and invest in what works and get rid of what doesn't. And I suggest that the state should do the same thing with this money. They shouldn't just take this money and put it into drug treatment programs where the people are going to fail and wind up back in prison anyway. You had an op-ed piece in the Times not long ago about this. You recently testified before Congress, as we said. What do you want Congress to do? Where should that money go, or some I, of that stimulus money? Well, I definitely think it should go to pay transitional work, because after all, if you want to get money out into the community, and into people's hands, the people at the bottom are the people that need it the most. I feel for the folks and some of our largest contributors have, have been hurt uh, in the economy the way that it is. But they will definitely survive. Somebody who has a billion dollars now that has a half a billion dollars, okay, I mean, I can understand that. It hurts our tax revenue, it hurts contributions and all of that stuff. But somebody who has nothing and the choice is between using that money to help them start to climb the economic ladder and stay out of prison. That's where we should invest. You uh, tell a number of wonderful stories about people whose lives uh, have been changed. Obviously, uh, there are failures too, of course, but one uh, man who had been arrested many times for breaking and entering becomes a locksmith. Another person who stabbed people now becomes a dialysis technician, so he says he is stabbing people in effect to save their lives. Uh, I guess there are lots of stories like that. Well, we had a graduation uh, uh, the other evening at the St. Ignatius Loyola Church, like we do every year, and we uh, graduated to over uh, 350 folks. And each individual story is like that. I mean, these are human beings with all of the great potential that all of us have, and they've been behind this kind of eight ball in their lives, uh, you know, never being able to get ahead. And we allow them to do that, and then they have pride. And, you know, they have self-worth. 
Graduation entails what? What are they graduating well, they, from? They, they're in our program for a period of time, up to, to the average is uh, about 12 months. And when they graduate, it means that they already have a job, they have a place to live that they're paying for with that job, they're drug and alcohol free, and they support their children. Those are the four things that it's not like here you graduated from college and here's your certificate, now go out into the world and make it. We've already done that, and this is just a celebration of the fact that they have moved along. One of the things you also suggested, uh, pointed out, is how much they appreciate when people see these guys in the blue uniforms from Ready, Willing, and Able and say, thank you. Sam, you know, when we started, when we went to the street, as it were, in 1994 on the Upper East Side on East 86th Street to begin with, and, and now we clean 160 miles of New York City streets and sidewalks every day. Um, when we went to the street, some people were concerned that the community would say, you know, we don't want these people in our neighborhood. I mean, and we've heard that before when you try to cite facilities. Well, just the opposite happened. People came out of their homes, they went up to our guys and said, what are you doing? Who are you? And each one of them would explain that they were in this program and what the program was about. And then over these years, the folks have watched them work diligently in the community. And they say things like how polite they are, that they're always smiling, and incredibly enough, how safe they make them feel in the neighborhood. So that's a complete turnaround. And the socialization that our guys get, some of them have never had anybody say anything nice to them in their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, as sad as that is. And we have the people, the citizens, going up to them all day long and telling them how much they appreciate what they're doing. So. A reminder of the importance of saying thank you. And thank you, George McDonald, for joining us.